Amen. Again, it's good to be back with you. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. <clears throat> Here's what the Bible says. Verse 13 and 14. We'll read two verses. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Verse 14. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Everybody tells me, wherever I go all over the countryside, uh, you know what? Uh, Brother Starr, I like a preacher that tells it like it is. Amen. I, I don't hold anything back. I mean, give it to us straight. I hear that all the time. That's what I do. And especially this morning, if you want to know the truth, you've come to the right place. Uh, of course, you've come to the right place for the truth every service, right? Amen. But uh, God is a God of love. Our God is a God of love. He so loved every person here that he gave his only son. Let that register. Maybe you have a son. Maybe you have an only son. I don't know. But he gave his only son for me, Amen. for you, to die for us. And so, uh, but, so God's a God of love, but God is also... A God of judgment. Get this now. One day, God is going to balance the books. And in fact, let's make it personal. One day, God is going to balance my books and yours. Amen. That's a sobering thought. We're going to stand before a holy God. But... Teenager who refuses to joyfully surrender all that you are and have to him, God will balance your books one day. There is a judgment day coming. Adult who plays church and gives, uh, pays lip service uh, to serving God, who goes through the motions, but you know that you're a fake and unconfessed sin hidden in your life, God will balance your books. It's going to happen. Your day is coming. And by the way, your sin will be announced for all to hear and for all to see. And you will be embarrassed on that day. In Luke chapter 12 and verse 2, Jesus said, For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, what, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear and closets shall be proclaimed on the housetops. The message here is that everybody is going to know. So today I want to preach to you on this topic, when God balances the books. Would you bow with me for prayer? Dear kind Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus now, I thank you for our time together. But I thank you most of all for Jesus. And I thank you for the word of God that is rich and it is the truth. And Lord, we need to be challenged by the truth. I pray today, Lord, in Jesus' name, if there's one here who's lost, O oh Lord, open their eyes that they may want to receive Jesus as Savior and be spared the judgment day. I pray, Heavenly Father, for every Christian here, but some maybe who have slidden backward. I pray that this will be a day of rededicating our lives to you and to your purpose. I pray it will be a day of confession of sin and uh, that you may have your way in our lives. Stir our hearts now by your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There are several truths that we need to understand about this idea that when, uh, when God 
balances the books. First, the Bible speaks about judgment throughout the Bible. Throughout the Bible. In Acts chapter 17 and verses 30 and 31, Paul preached on Mars Hill. And he says, in the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Right. Why? Why does he command every man everywhere to repent? It, it, repent. Because in verse 31 it says, Because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given full assurance unto all men, in that he raised him from the dead. He will judge every person by Jesus Christ. And that's why Every man needs to repent of his sins. If you're here today, man, woman, boy, or girl, you need to repent of your sins. If you haven't done that, this is your day. You can do that today. And when you repent and believe on the finished work of Christ on the cross, that's what God says is necessary for you to have your name written in heaven. Amen. Paul says, just as certainly as Christ arose from the dead... One day, it is certain that you'll stand before the judgment. If you're lost without Christ, you'll face your sin. And make no mistake about it, be sure your sin will find you out. In Matthew chapter 11, Matthew chapter 11, go over there. I'll lubricate my voice. Matthew 11, Jesus Christ, in his earthly ministry, spoke of judgment. Now, we don't hear a lot of messages on judgment today, but he spoke about judgment. He says in Matthew eleven twenty one, 21, Woe unto you, Chorazin, woe unto you, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. For who? For Chorazin. It's a city. And the day of judgment. If you're lost, you will be at the day of judgment one day unless you come to Christ. Then Christ gave the same warning to Capernaum in verse 23. Matthew eleven twenty-three. 23. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which had been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained unto this day. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom. Think of that. We think of that as the arch destruction and judgment of God on Sodom. It will be more tolerable... For the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. There is a reckoning day coming. Make no mistake about it. A day of judgment. Again, Jesus told us in Matthew 12, the next chapter, just turn it over, one page, 1236. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account of thereof. Oh, here it is again. In the day of judgment, there is a day of judgment that's coming. Is there any doubt that Christ warned us about it? Um, at that day of judgment, you will have to stand before God. In fact, you'll be quickly kneeling before him. That's what the Bible's clear about. Three times in the Bible it says, that as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. Again, Ecclesiastes, let's go back to our, uh, the book where we started, Ecclesiastes, and chapter 11 this time. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 9. The Bible even warns teens and young adults. He says, Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. 
and walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes. In other words, do whatever you want and see whatever you want. But, and here's the warning and here's where the whole verse hinges. But, know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. In other words, God says, hey, teens, you go ahead and live it up, but be warned, judgment day is coming, and God will balance the books. You will face the Almighty God, and you'll pay for your riotous living and your partying, and you will pay for your dabbling in the occult and immoral uh, debauch living and senseless drinking and doping and porn and, and uh, smoking and gambling, there will be a payday someday. You will not get away with it because there's coming a judgment day when God balances the books. You'll answer for your sins one day. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. Not all judgment is reserved for the great white throne. I wonder if we've forgotten that Paul wrote to Christians too. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Galatians 6, 7. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also what? Reap. reap. We're going to reap what we sow. All who think that they have every base covered, all who think other Christians have to obey God's word and make commitments and sacrifices, but they can live for themselves, and God will overlook it. You have been deceived. And he says, don't be deceived. Hebrews 2.2 says, every transgression, every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. So the Bible speaks of judgment throughout the um, judgment, the judgment, great white throne judgment is coming, and God will balance the books one day. Turn to 1 Timothy chapter 5. 1 Timothy chapter 5. Secondly, this morning, Calvary is a preview of God's judgment. Calvary is a preview of of God's judgment. 1 Timothy 5.24, some men's sins are open beforehand, going before to judgment, and some men's men they follow after. One interpretation of this verse, and there are several, is that we can wisely send our sins ahead to have them judged in Christ. Now, Christ bore in his own body our sins on the cross. Everything about Calvary spoke of judgment. Everything. Christ became the object of God's wrath. Darkness was a sign of God's judgment as darkness came upon the face of the whole earth as he was being crucified. The scourging and the piercing and the plucking of his beard, he took our beating. And it was a sign of judgment. For our sin, torment, pain, anguish that Christ suffered, the mocking, the thirsting, like those in hell will thirst. And like the rich man uh, who died and went to hell and was thirsty. His bleeding, Christ's bleeding and his dying, it all pointed to judgment. Second right. Corinthians 5.21 says, For he hath made him, that is he, God, hath made him, Christ, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that's Christ never sinned, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, in Christ. And God the Father turned his back on his Son who bore our sin, and Jesus felt abandoned in that moment. You see, Calvary, where Christ was crucified, was a scene of judgment, the judgment upon Jesus Christ for our sins. It couldn't be for his sins. He didn't have any sins. He was dying in our place. So God says, I can send my sins ahead, already judged in Christ, by putting my trust and faith in Christ and what he did for me. 
So today, you have a choice. Your sins must either be judged upon the cross in the person of Christ, or they have to be judged upon you in hell. And the judgment day will declare it. Listen closely. Your sins have to be judged. My sins have to be judged. There's no way around it. Sin has consequences. We're talking about when God balances the books. So Calvary was a scene of judgment. Number three. What about the believer's sins? What about them? Hey, Christian, God will balance your books too. Of course, he's balanced them in Christ so that we don't have to go to hell. Praise God. I say, praise God, we don't have to go to hell. Uh, God will not overlook a thing. Nothing escapes his eye. It will be a thorough audit. One day... Our church book showed that we had $17,000 in the general fund. But we started bouncing checks all over the place. I thought, what in the world? What's going on here? I called my bookkeeper. I said, what happened? He said, I don't know. And then that week, I called the bank to see if they made an error. Surely the bank made the error. And they said no. So I spent 40 hours that week auditing all of our books and finances and found hundreds of mistakes, and they added up to over $17,000. It was not on purpose. It was innocent. But uh, from that time, we set up auditors so that wouldn't happen again. But the books had to be balanced, you see. They have to. It was a painful process but they had to be balanced. The Bible doesn't teach sinless perfection. That is that you can live a perfect life, never sin, and so forth. When a believer sins, he is not lost again. No, 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 no. You don't lose your salvation. You cannot be saved again. When we are forgiven, we receive Christ, who is life and life eternal. He gives to us the gift of eternal life. Yes, he does. And it is not eternal if he takes it back. So uh, he preserves the Christian soul forever. But that doesn't give you a license to sin. No. We are all capable of it because we have two natures working in us now. The nature of Christ, but also, or God, and the nature of sin is still present. And that it's a struggle. Amen. You'd, you'd attest to that. But it doesn't give us a license to sin. In fact, the true child of God has an active conscience. And he has a desire. He wants to please God. Amen. Find out what the Bible says and please him. But if we don't, God will ring our number. Amen. And he balances the books for a Christian by chastening here in this life. I had a friend named Gary. Gary rededicated his life to the Lord at age 44. And he was growing in the Lord. That's exciting, isn't it? Wonderful truth. But rewind for a moment. When you back up, he professed Christ as a young man. He grew up in a home with a godly father. He married a preacher's daughter. Pretty good start. Had three boys and put the three boys in a Christian school. He was a business executive and he was making money hand over fist. He had a great start. But then he got busy. Well, we all get busy, don't we? He got busy with his business and he started to hit and miss church. That's a problem. We all need the the purification of the preaching of the Word of God. We need to hear what God says. And so uh, it's by the hearing of the Word that brings faith in our life. And he declined in faith, and he's still a Christian, but he hit and missed church. His conscience became dulled. He began seeing another woman. That's a problem. He needed more money. 
Don't ask me why. And so he embezzled from his company. That's a problem. But God balances the books, even for the Christian who sins. His wife discovered his affair. His employer discovered his thievery, and Gary went to prison as a young man. But that's not the end of the reaping. His boys couldn't continue in the Christian school because they didn't have any money. And so his wife grew bitter, his children grew bitter, and they rebelled. The schools they went to, they got kicked out one school after another. I don't know how many I tracked them in that they had been thrown out of school. When he got out of prison, his wife left him and divorced him. The boys got into the occult. We tried to work with them in our youth group. It was almost impossible. Um, they, were, they were in the occult and dope. Those two go together. And rock music. Those three go together. He lost his last job, and he was penniless when I met him. He was a broken man. Yes, thank God, Gary rededicated his life. But he'll lament for the rest of his life what could have been if he had obeyed God from the beginning. If he just kept serving God. If he just kept going to church, it could have made a difference in his life. What happened? Well, God balanced the books in a Christian's life. You see, we sin on credit. Let me say it again. We sin on credit. But the devil glosses over the due date of the bill. And then one day, God balances the, book, the account. Although not all illness and death is a judgment, it was in David's case. You remember David? David was a believer who had an affair, and God took the child from that affair. You say, well, preacher, I've sinned, wickedly sinned. I'm a Christian, but no judgment. It doesn't happen to me. Hey, you better check it out. In Hebrews 12, 8, But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers... Then are ye bastards and not sons. And a bastard is a child born illegitimately without a known father. Hmm. If you run after the devil, pursue after the world, chase after sin, then you'll be judged and you'll be chastened in this life if you're a Christian. But if God doesn't lay a hand on you, you better check it out. Are you really born again? What really happened? Are you saved or not? Probably not. Because if you're his child, he'll chasten you. Every father should demand obedience and respect and must take time to discipline his children. I thank God for my dad, Lyle Starr. Um, he worked on the railroad, worked hard. He provided for us. We took a family vacation every year, and uh, learned to travel. I love to travel, um, but he, um, he enhanced that. When my dad spoke, it was better than E.F. Hutton. I mean, um, we all perked up, and he didn't repeat things twice. Um, he was very stern, and it was clear that Johnny wasn't going to run his house. Or Randy. Nobody was. Dad was running his house. But I've risen up, and my brothers and sister have risen up to call him blessed. He loved me. Therefore, he spanked me when I needed it. God's like that. Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. And so, you who claim to be saved, but you are never spanked, when you sin, go ahead and drink that beer. But God's going to get you for it. Go ahead and cheat your employer. Go ahead and lift things from the company. They're big. They can do without. I need this. I'll help myself. You remember, God's going to get you for that. Thief. 
Go ahead and tell lies and be deceptive. Go ahead and live two lives. One everybody sees and one that you think that nobody sees. You are a scoundrel. And God's going to get you for it. Go ahead, teenagers, and break your parents' heart. But you remember this. There's a judgment day coming. And God's going to get your attention. Go ahead, adults, and raise your kids with TV as a babysitter. And MTV to watch. And HBO and Showtime. And the cell phones, well, smart so, uh, cell phones where they can get into things they shouldn't be into and you're not monitoring them. And computers and gaming. And remember that God is watching and God will balance the books one day. Somebody in our church right now. Parents have been warned, but they just couldn't pull the plug on the computer. And she got into it. And she got into finding out people all over the United States that were playing this game. And now she's left home. And the parents are broken. But that's what's going to happen, don't you see? We've got to vigilantly watch over our children and what they're into. Where is our fear of God? The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, what Christians ought to do is if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God offers Christians the opportunity to confess their sins and he promises to forgive and cleanse them. In a few minutes, if you've strayed into a besetting sin, maybe a hidden sin, or you've allowed things in your life you know are wrong before God, you'll have a chance. We'll have an invitation. You can come and deal with God. And you can leave here and that load is lifted off of you and you're cleansed. Amen. Finally this morning, consider Every unbeliever will stand one day before God at the great white throne judgment. Turn to Revelation chapter 20 as we finish now. Don't be deceived that somehow you'll avoid judgment. I'll bypass it. No, you won't. Don't stick your head in the sand and try not to think about it. There is a judgment coming. Face it squarely today. In Revelation 20 and verse 11, it says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, verse 12, Small and great stand before God. He's on the throne. And the books were opened and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. In other words, God keeps track. God's watching every one of us and he keeps track. Have you ever had to go to court and stand before a judge? Um, you know, that can be scary. I had to do that one time. One day, uh, I was in second grade, and it had snowed that morning, and it was before school, and um, somebody threw a snowball and hit me, and I wasn't too happy about that, second grader. So I thought, What I didn't know, it was right outside the principal's window. The principal called me into the office. Talk about being scared. Seven years old, and I'm called into the principal's office. And indeed, I got a whipping that day. Because it was a school rule, you don't throw a snowball. He wasn't impressed that somebody had hit me. He saw me. The second guy always gets it, you know. But... Turn to Matthew chapter 7 as our last passage this morning. 
One day, every person who refused to receive Christ during his life here on earth will stand before God. The great white throne judgment will occur in the near future and will be the ultimate day of God balancing the books. And it will be scary on steroids if you're lost. There you stand before an almighty God. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. You may be brazen, outspoken, rebellious, and cocky today, but God will leave you speechless in that day. In that day, men and women will try to make their excuses, as they did in Matthew chapter 7, as Jesus relates it. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. It's his, the will of the Father is to be saved. And many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. They'll say, Lord, you ought to let me into your heaven. Just look at what I've done. I've given to children, children's homes and to other charities. I've visited the hospital and I've been a volunteer. I, I've done wonderful works and I've given to needy causes. I've even been a member of a local church. But the Lord's not fooled, nor is he impressed. He'll declare, depart from me. I never knew you if you hadn't received Christ as Savior. You see, all sin will come under judgment when God balances the books. In Daniel chapter 5, I'll read this one to you, and we're finished. In the Old Testament, God weighed Belshazzar's books. He weighed them, and he had to pay. It says in verse 27, Daniel 5, Tico, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. God's balancing the books. In verse 28, Pete. Perez, uh, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Ooh, that day judgment came to Belshazzar. I'm here to declare to you the truth from God. There's an accounting day coming, a day of judgment. It's a foolish man who thinks he can sin and never pay. The day that you die or the day that Christ returns, it'll be too late for you to be saved then. If you're going to be saved, today is the day of salvation. But the God of judgment is also a God of love and mercy. Amazing. For those who will humble themselves before him. You could balance the books with God this morning. <laughs> Wonderful truth. You could walk out of here being a free person, free from your sin, free to go to heaven, free to live for Christ. You could clear your conscience, maybe for the first time in your life today. But God balances the books. Every head bowed and every eye closed now.